is the, that is an amount equivalent to the meals tax. Okay. All right. So again, my big concern here is to stop using the word free. Right. And that's something I think we should seriously think about. I mean, it's cash to balance the budget. It doesn't, the, the word free just throws people off, I think. And, Excess. And, and makes it, yeah, free cash to capital plans. Well, that's cash. right. I think if we change the language to yeah, we haven't done other that sources of like, funds. Yeah, so. As we talk about it, I think that's something, yeah. that's my big beef is, is just stop calling it free cash because right. one, it's not free. And it's just a categorization that we have that you put this money in this category. And then when you're done with it, it becomes mm -hmm. something else. I, I agree that free cash is an Orwellian exercise in doublespeak uh, because it's not free in the sense that you just get it, it's free of encumbrances and that's in the same way as a dog is free of, of fleas. Uh, you know, so that's, that's a technical term that the Department of Revenue came up with. I understand that, but we can call it some of the other I don't, I don't have Come a problem calling it. Because everybody's other always funds. known it as free cash. So you think of something. Cash. 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 All right. Let's go. Seven o'clock. All we right. Now? So, um, yeah, we're at seven o'clock. So our next meeting is September second. Second. Um, we'll start scheduling. Some of the departments come in and talk about their SWATs. And then the only other thing we didn't go over or talk about at the tri board was we do have an estimate for free. For what our free cash balances. <laughs> so this number is uh, uh, is still a work in progress, but I, I think it's uh, it represents uh, uh, pretty close to what we think we're going to get certified in uh, free cash. Um, in monies. In monies. In monies. In, in well, you can call money, it money that is free of encumbrances. <laughs> Uh, so there are two columns here, there are two methodologies that the accountant uses in order to come up with a, uh, a certified number. Uh, and so she uses the one that internally uh, we use in the town of Hadley to come up with a number of 775,000 and change. And then she goes through the Department of Revenue exercise in order to come up with a number that's 76. Uh, 764,000 and change. It's uh, within 5% of the Department of Revenue requirements, so we're thinking that the free cash is going to be somewhere around 750 to 775. Okay. So is there, so is there anything else we want to add to the agenda for the September meeting? Okay. So the only the only thing to say, and like this is in the nature of a threat, uh, is that uh, the Department of Revenue lost about 19 percent of their workforce through the early retirement. We've been advised that um, they're going to take any uh, free cash certifications and set them to one side unless we intend to use them uh, that free cash at a special town meeting. So we have to be very clear with the Department of Revenue that uh, that. We intend to use this money and that way we'll get uh, put on a fast track. You should just tell them we're using all our money. Right. We're using all of our money. You know, actually, everybody, there's lots of departments having really big hits right now with their mm -hmm. retirements. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're, you no, know, if you want to add something to the agenda, just send it to me and we'll get it on the agenda. Um, we do have to start talking about fall town meeting stuff, so. That stuff might be added to the agenda for September because we do have to make up. We have to talk about OPEB and a couple other things to make the balance, the budget whole. And that's the annual town meeting, that special town meeting. Right. I have a special town meeting on all of your agendas through September and October. Okay. Thank you for coming. And all right. So a little past seven o'clock. Um, I'm going to open the floor for anybody who has any public comments at this time. Let's put that, put that in here. Yeah, there's a couple requests from different departments at the town hall about putting up some do not enter signs at the town hall on the Route 9 side entrance. I don't know how the board feels on that. Uh, it was brought to me by the building inspector that cars are cutting across and going through the parking lot at a high rate of speed. 
I spoke with the town administrator about this, and uh, I'm just looking for direction whether or not we should do this or not. Yeah, this is something that I recommend. People do tend to use it as a shortcut, and there is a blind corner, uh, and there have been some close calls. I thought we should. We should. I thought that was. No. Mm, never. No. Chief Mason? We talked about yes. it. I have a complaint. I've heard the complaint that, uh, that it, it gets hairy back there from uh, a couple of different employees. And actually, I we happened, to be sitting, happened to be sitting in a meeting with David one day when uh, someone came in to do a quote on paving the parking lot. I forget which company it was. Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers. And we actually asked them while they were there if they could add, add to the quote some type of speed bump or dip or something that wouldn't get destroyed um, and we waste our money on to try to slow people down from going through there. The fire chief also has some concerns as it relates to blocking entrances and exits obviously as far as you know legal standard goes for his emergency vehicles to get in there so getting him involved would probably be smart as well if we're going to go past doing simple speed bumps or dips. So I have no problem if you guys wish to put together a plan and present it to us and say this is what you want to do and these are why you want to do it. I don't see a problem with uh, trying to restrict some access there, so we would entertain it. You guys work. We're not the only landlord on that property. Some people from our our friends at the church may have some information or some input as to how they feel about that as yeah. well. We spoke with them already, and David asked me to speak with them, and they have no problem with this. Thinking that they do not interrupt over time. So, so you guys, I'm okay with that. Just mm -hmm. trying to put together a plan and bringing it back to us. All right. Is there any other? Anybody else have a public comment thing they wish to talk about? No. Well, you'll do some announcements. Nope. All right. Uh, just uh, if, uh, if we're doing announcements, I had the pleasure of attending the ribbon cutting ceremony for the Norwater Rail Trail in, over at Northampton, a project that the DCR has been working on for many years. Uh, they've uh, vastly improved the rail trail, which is a real asset to the town of Hadley, uh, and uh, have made it more accessible. They've gotten rid of the glass fault. Uh, and uh, and there were a number of people there to take a uh, bike ride this morning. I only wish I had time to, uh, to go with them, but it was a great event. Was there another celebration you perhaps attended as well last week on the steps of City Hall? Old age. Oh yes, yes. The uh, <laughs> Yes, the fiftieth and uh, I guess they call it the fiftieth birthday. Also, it's the fiftieth anniversary of. Uh, Medicare uh, being signed into law and having a big impact upon the affordability of, uh, of insurance for seniors and for young folks and uh, throughout the nation and so uh, it was a nice event you were there uh, and uh, uh, you know I think it's I think it's great when a, a federal program can be celebrated because it's done so much good for folks. I have to do the condolences to the Helen Kowal's family. Helen was 102 years old when she passed, and uh, she was quite a gal, and we uh, uh, certainly her condolences to her family. And then I also would like to take the time to congratulate um, two locals um, from here that were inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame, um, and that is Gus Peabody, who was a um, coach basketball here at Hopkins, and was our AD director and was also a PE teacher here. And also Tom Wickes, who played for Hopkins and UMass and coached at East Hampton and Belchertown. So oh, congratulations to them. That's good. Okay. All right, let's get going with the uh, agenda then. So on our consent agenda, we have the minutes from the 15th. We have warrants. We have municipal hearing contract and uh, save a buck class two auto license. So is anybody, is everybody okay with everything on the consent agenda? I guess since there was no problem, we had issued the class two license um, for save a buck and that was only going to be for one car. And I guess the planning board dish did say they could increase it to three. Yes. Mm -hmm. I have the minutes from their meeting just to add to your record for that. 
so you have it. So. That's fine. I, I don't see a problem with that. I just wanted to explain to people what the what it was that what it was. Yep. I have no problem with it. I just okay. want to. So I will make a motion to approve. Second. Consent agenda. Second. Second. I want to talk a little bit about the uh, doll, town hall door project. So if we can take that off the agenda, I see it's on the latter part of our meeting today, is it not? It is based on the Correct. consent agenda. Uh, so it's the approval for the, uh, there was some confusion there, I think, that we need to work out because the people that are on the uh, uh, buildings committee thought that the bid had already been done on that. So I'm just trying to just make sure that everybody's on the same page when we talk about these things and, and that we understand as the procurement officer, David needs to take care of these things and to put this out to bid just because we talked about it at a meeting didn't mean it was automatically done. You're talking correct. about the minutes, Jerry? Correct. Okay. So that, but that we did talk about it during we the We talked time. about it, but it, I want to make sure it's not confused that we, we approved actually, it there when we're actually approving it tonight. We talked about it there, we're approving it tonight, correct? Correct. Okay. As long as that's understood, I, I would leave it in the consent agenda. Okay. All right. All those in favor of the consent agenda? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. So one those items are all taken care of? One Thank absentee. You. Oh, yeah. One absentee. One absentee. Okay. Say that all we have an appointment at 7.15. Michael. Mr. Komoski. Yes, I'd like to start with the uh, letter that the board received from Bruce Merriam. He's intending to retire from the town of Hadley Water Division. He's the uh, interim chief treatment plant operator, and his effective date would be Saturday, August 22nd. The board should have a copy of his letter, so I'd make like to start off with that. Make a motion to accept his resignation. Second. Discussion? Retired. What happens if we actually deny his letter? Does he have to <laughs> keep working? <laughs> I don't think so. He's of age. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We should thank him, too. For yeah, I was going to say, I think we should be thanking for, for his years of I service. I think so, yes. for his years yes. of service since we opened up the water treatment plant. Uh, not quite when we opened it, but... Correct, you've been here for five years. Five years, mm -hmm. yeah. As the Board of Selectmen know, there's going to be, well, there is now two vacancies in the water department. One is the primary treatment operator that operates the treatment plant, along with the other duties, the outside work. And the other is the primary distribution person that does all the meter reading, backflow testing, surveying, flushing, Marking out for dig safe, all the repairs to the hydrants, all the inspections and service devices, ones that required water sampling, water turn on and off, meter change outs, and et cetera, et cetera. I could go on for another 10 minutes. The water division has advertised for a primary water treatment plant operator. I have spoken with Guilford since he, Bruce Merriam, submitted his resignation about going out for a primary distribution operator also. So we're in the process, we advertise for both positions. We advertise for the treatment and for the distribution. We have interviewed seven applicants. There are possibly another two, maybe three, that we would like to interview before we make our final decision. The uh, applicants, there are two from within that work for the town already, let's say, for the, for the uh, DPW. So we are trying to narrow it down to the most qualified. This treatment plant requires a 2T, and our distribution requires a 2D, as the board is aware of. I mentioned this to Guilford a while ago. So at the next select board meeting, I am Narrowing this down, we interviewed. I'm setting up a second interview with one of these persons. I believe we would have one or two candidates ready for this, for these two positions. So I would just like to add that these are very, very highly responsible positions to the town of Hadley. They have a lot of responsibility behind them, both of them, the treatment which is for the quality of the water that goes out to the townspeople, 
and the distribution system that distributes it. So these are very, very responsible positions to have in the town of Hadley. So it's going to take some time. We interviewed. I'm setting up a second set of interviews. I'm going to take them over to the treatment plant. I'm going to show them around. I'm going to ask them some more questions before we come up with our list by next selectman's meeting because, of course, our staffing plan, temporary staffing plan, as I mentioned to Guilford, is going to be up very shortly. So we've got to try to act on this. But in the meantime, what I have done is we have talked to small water systems, which I spoke to Guilford about, about getting them on board to help us out. Because after Bruce retires, if we don't have any on anybody on board because let's say, well, this person has to get this notice first before we can start. So there's going to be a little bit of a time in between, let's say, that I contacted them and they are willing to help us out even during the week on our regular shifts, let's say the four-hour shifts during the day to help us out. It's going to be costly, but to keep the state and the town water supply is safe. We have to do this until we get these people in their positions. So I even went as far and really dug into this with small waters and I said, well, look at, for the heck of it, throw me a number out there to run this plant. Annual. Annually, for one year. Well, what it boils down to is they're getting so busy that they don't even want to try to handle the weekends, but I figured the weekend's in there anyway. So we're looking at a ballpark number of around with the weekends. This is no alarms. This is just the four hours. This is with the weekends and everything else included is around $225,000. I thought it was going to be around 180, but when you have to figure in the double time for the Sundays, and the time and a half for the weekends, and they charge the uh, flat rate of $80 per hour. You multiply it all that out by the hours, by the weeks, by the months, by the year, it comes out to about that. Do you have the current personal uh, expenses for personnel, including insurance and all full not, benefits? Not with me, no. I wouldn't know. It's not very far from that number, though, is it, no, Michael? It's not. It's not. Because, as you know, the former employees that we had there were making a good amount of money, let's say, on, on when they work there. Okay. So what we're trying to do is get the best person we can for this job. It's going to take some time. It's one of these processes where you just can't make a staff decision at, and then you're saying, oh, we made a mistake. This person, of course, is going to have to be union. Both of them will have to be. They'll have to be on probation, and they'll have to go all with whatever goes through with the union for the contract for for benefits, let's say. So hopefully by next meeting, we, I, will have two uh, positive people to take over the water department. In the meantime, if we have any breaks, obviously the highway division will fill in because right now we have two, but we're going to have one, and we don't want to actually burn this one person out where he's working the plant and he's going to go run and then he's going to come back, and that's where a lot of mistakes would happen. I have some questions. I don't know. So, what was the number for small waters again? Around 225. That's just a ballpark. That's not definite. With no overtime. With no, that is with the overtime. I'm sorry, I misspoke. That's overtime for calls. No, that would just be the weekend shift. Weekend, weekend shifts. Weekend. Overtime. Not the over. Yeah. 365 days a year. That would be right. there. Right. Mm -hmm. That's scheduled work. Scheduled overtime, correct? Mm -hmm. Which is four hours on a Saturday and four hours on a Sunday. So, my other two questions. Go ahead. First, you had seven applicants. Yes. So, and you have at least one, you have some internal applicants who you might just consider promoting. Correct. Um, so, to save time in this situation. It's not, wait a minute, that's not necessarily promoting. They're internal people, but it could be a lateral move as well. Okay, it could be a lateral, could be. So, with that, that would, if you move somebody internally over to this position, it would create another vacancy. So if, the, if there's a person who's in that pool of seven who you think would fill that vacancy well, I think it would be okay if the board's okay with me mm -hmm. that you also bring that recommendation forward next right. week. So if the pool of candidates is good and there's somebody who's willing to take the lower, the lesser job too, right. bring forth the recommendation and we'll just solve it all 
one right. time unless yeah. someone tells me no. No, that's an excellent suggestion. You told me no. I just don't want you to say lesser job. That it's not necessarily under any circumstances a lesser job. Well, so if it could be a lateral, position. it would not. Be, in some instances, it would not be. So, those are my two. As the liaison to the highway, I've been very interactive regarding this <laughs> issue. They're trying to corrupt you. Yeah. I, I've got two questions. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so, first one sticking with the, the small waters, what it would cost. Um, do you believe that we have fully vetted the cost benefit of? not filling those two positions and strictly outsourcing it? No, I have not done that to see what the actual cost would be with their benefits compared. But how do you want to say this? They'll, they'll run the plant, they'll do the overtime, but will they do what else is required in the plant? Will they keep it up? You know, if you have our own people on staff, it's a better situation because if there's a problem with something that needs to be fixed, correct, corrected, we can do it. It's like when you get a contract with somebody, they do X and that's it. You know, that's how they're paid for their four hours. I mean, if there's water leaking out the door after they're gone or something, well, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you're going to have to pay even more for that. So this could skyrocket even more than, than what I mentioned. I mean, it's it's a pretty fair amount of money as it is for an outside firm to come in. I muddle this in my brain because, you know, I've been here so long. I was here when the plant was built. I was here before the plant was built. I ran, you know, with all the problems through it. I mean, we've had operators come and we had operators go. But for now, I think the, the better way is to have people in-house that, you know, are trained. It's going to take some time. I would have to get small waters back in there make sure that they're all on board because you know that's pretty technical some of that stuff to learn right off the bat mm -hmm. just like with any job. Okay. To echo the Before. concerns of Michael, excuse me, to echo Michael's concerns, I know our the town to the north of us, Sunderland, does sub out their sewage treatment plant and they have zero control as we talked earlier tonight about Smith, uh, Smith Volk. They have a very similar concern regarding the expenses that they have at their, at their treatment plant. Okay. Excuse and, me. That's okay. So, um, so just following on that, then I'll, but before the other question, I think just as a discipline, I'm not second guessing um, by any means that you know the conclusion that you've drawn, and Jerry just added some additional information as well. But I think as a as a management discipline, when we're faced with this type of a situation there really should be an actual cost benefit analysis done that says here are our options and this is this is why we're going here because to your point everything isn't just number crunching um, with an outside contract clearly we have the opportunity for escalation of costs over time we, we lose control over that um, and we there's the opportunity cost of not having two bodies that are under our control that we can deploy for other resources I mean that's what I heard you say um, but there still aren't any numbers in front of us, which always makes me uncomfortable. So if it isn't too much trouble, I would like to see an actual... Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then, um, then there's the other side of it, which is it needs to be fully burdened personnel costs because we also want to be taking into account not just the health care costs, but the OPEB and retirement burden. Right, so general rule of thumb is add 30% to whatever somebody's paying. I don't know exactly what it is here, but it could be more than that, yeah. especially when you're dealing with a pension, so when right? When you put the OPEB on it, it's much And the more. OPEB, yes, probably closer to 35, maybe even approaching maybe 40. 40 or 50. So, I mean, I think it, I just don't want to be that quick to jump and say, don't do it, so. No, that's, that's why I mentioned okay. it, to open up all the doors here so that everyone's aware of it. So the one thing I would, just to stay on the same topic, the one thing I'd say is that's something we should definitely try to do at a time where we're not shorthanded and we can think through all of it because when you, if you wait until you're shorthanded to do it, you might end up with a surprise you don't really want. Shorthanded to do what? When your staff is shorthanded, 
you're kind of vulnerable at that time and people take advantage of the prices when, when they do that. Oh, I agree. So yeah. they, they may come in so low that you jump right at it. And then as the contract goes along, it could be, that's some people have experienced doing that. Mm -hmm. So I understand what you're saying and having the numbers there. And I would like to see that as we go through some of the analysis and budget processing is maybe we might want to pick some of those numbers up as we go along and verify that we're either doing it correctly or we might want to make a change somewhere. Okay, but I mean, just from a personnel standpoint, what you also don't want to do is hire two people into a position and then turn around a year from now and say, hey, let's outsource. Yes. That would be a really bad idea. It is. So I, I agree with you, but I think that now's the time to crunch some. To at least look into it. To at least look into it. And then, then we're all kind of satisfied. We know what it's costing us. It's August 5th, and our retirement for our second water plant person occurs on August 22nd. Right. Okay. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not remotely suggesting stopping plan, okay. no. plan A. No. Just, yeah. just to look at it and see. Yeah, another question? Yeah, and then I had another one, but did David want to say oh, something about uh, that? Yeah, the conversation sort of drifted from what I was going to say, but one of the things that we have to look at is the revenue from the Red Enterprise Fund to the general fund for the administrative charges. If you outsource, then you've lost that you've revenue. You've lost that revenue. So we'll just add that to the, yep. to the analysis. Yeah, yeah that is. Some you lose, some you don't. Right, right, indirect. Um, so the other. <laughs> so just on the, so now going back to plan A, which is interviewing yep. these folks, um, d is there a crystallized plan in place? And it's a little bit easier when they're internal versus external. But in terms of reference checking, background checking, have you I've, in? I've done the reference checking and the background checking on a few of the people that we feel that would be the top candidates. Okay. We haven't done them on all of them. Some of these people, how can I say this, I'll be nice, have the licenses, zero experience, never worked in the water plant, mm -hmm. never worked on a distribution system, but they have the licenses. So we're getting these people that have the knowledge, that have been working in water plants, to, to, you know, to, to get to them to see what and how, if we could get them here for the, for the town. I've checked their references. The, there's, three that are sticking in my mind, but I'm going to be open until I meet with them again and bring them over to the plant and show them what's going on. One more thing before I forget now, that's just running the plant. The whole other side of the picture, as Guilford knows, is the distribution system. We'd still have to have people to do that, mm -hmm. which is just as big or even bigger, let's say, than running the plant the miles of pipeline and hydrants and everything that I mentioned earlier that still has to be done to remain in compliance. So, you know, the 225 is not the full picture. The, you know, right. the full picture is still having staff here to do all this, to read the meters, to do the backflow, and, you know, all the other things that I mentioned earlier that all has to be still done. When, when you come in um, at the next meeting and present uh, your recommendations or whatever, could you also be prepared to bring in just to kind of summarize exactly what has been done from a background and reference checking standpoint? Yep. I can do that. Thanks. All right. Any more comments, questions about this? No. All right. New business, old business number one, the Bala water abatement. So you have a recommendation from the, uh, uh, Mr. Nabal who came to uh, for uh, water abatement several months ago. The select board asked the water division to investigate. That investigation revealed no errors in recording the in water information. Uh, the collector has made a recommendation to assess at the agricultural rate, which the town has done in other cases. Uh, uh, so the amount of the abatement based upon assessing at the agricultural rate would be 100 $1,293.89. So moved. Second. Any questions? Did we ever find out if there was any leaks or anything? We never found any leaks. I yes. Thought. Okay. You did find leaks? We did find leaks. We sent the leak detection person out there. I believe, well, this was done a while ago. Yeah, this was done in April. Yeah, where we went out and mm -hmm. found leaks. So where was the leak? We had an outside company come in and actually put on their machine, on their uh, leak detection, and came up with a scenario, actually, it looks something like this. I gave it to David a while ago. It's probably not in the package now. Okay, where, was, where was it? 
it was out by the barn. Down back. So, motion yeah. second on the floor. So I'm sorry, we're we're abating, we're taking twelve hundred ninety three dollars off of the bill. Yes. So what's the bill? Twenty eight thirty three seventy two with interest. Okay, so twenty eight is going down by the twelve hundred. Right. Okay. One three four zero ninety. That's the amount he's going to pay. Got it. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So let's. Uh, let's take a